let's solve this question. Prove that square root of n is a relational number. Also prove that a plus b root n is irrational for all a comma b belonging to rational numbers. So let's start by assuming. Let us assume square root of n n as a rational number. What is a rational number? A number in the form of p by q, where p and q are integers such that q not equal to 0. So I am assuming square root of n is equal to p by q. The condition here is p and q are co-primes. What are co-primes? Let's consider 6 pi. Is this a co-prime? No, not co-primes. Because we have a common factor between 6 and 8, we can cancel it with 2. But 3 by 4, the values 3 and 4 are co primes because you don't have a common factor between 3 and 4. So let's consider root n is equal to p by q, where p and q do not have any common factor, which means they are co primes. Now let's simplify this equation. Square root of n into q is equal to p, squaring on both sides, we get nq square is equal to p square. Now when they are co-primes, when you say p squared is expressed as n into q squared, we can see that p squared has a factor n, which means p squared is divisible by n. And this is true, when p squared is divisible by n, p is also divisible by n. And this statement is true if n is a prime number. So we have p having a factor as n. Now let's consider p is equal to n into some value k. Substituting p is equal to n into k, in this equation 1, we get n q square is equal to n square k square. Cancelling n, we get q square is equal to n into k square. If you look at this, we again have q square as the product of n and k square, which means q square is divisible by n. And same for the same reason, since n is a prime number, we have q is also divisible by n. So what did we find? P divisible by n. We also got q divisible by n. So when p and q both are divisible by n, we get a common factor to p and q, which contradicts our assumption that p and q are co-primes. So it contradicts our assumption that square root of n is a rational number. Hence, we try square root of n is an irrational number as it contradicts the condition p comma q as co-primes. Square root of n is an irrational number. Of course, when n is not a perfect square, as it contradicts the condition p and q are co-primes. Now let's, let's prove the second part of the question that is a plus b root n is irrational for all rational values a and b. Let's assume a plus b root n again as some rational value. Let's consider p by q again. Now let's simplify this. We get p, b root n is equal to p by q minus a. We get b root n is equal to p minus a q by q, which gives us root, root n is equal to b minus a q by b into q. If we look at the RHS, we have p minus a q by b into q, where p, a, b and q are all rational values. So the arithmetic operation on rational values will again give you a rational value. So the entire RHS is rational, while the LHS square root of n is irrational, which we have just proved. Hence, a rational value cannot be equal to an irrational value. Hence, our assumption that is a plus b root n is a rational value is false. Hence, we say a plus b root 
root n or we conclude a plus b root n as an as an irrational number. Let's solve this question today. Prove that product of three consecutive positive integers is always divisible by six. Now let's use Euclid's division lemma, which says any number which is divided by six either leaves out remainder as zero, one, two, three, four, or five. So this is expressed. Number when it is divided by six, which leaves out remainder zero, is expressed as six q. Which leaves out remainder one is expressed as six q plus one. Then six q plus two, six q plus three, six q plus four. And 6 q plus 5. So the possible remainders are either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. So number, any number which divided by 6 leaves out remainder either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. So any number can be expressed in these forms. Now let's look at the statement product of three consecutive integers. Let's start from 6 q as a number. Let's consider 6 q as one number. The next consecutive integer to add is 6 q plus 1. And the next consecutive integer to add as 6q plus 2. So product of these three obviously is divisible by 6 because 6 can be written common and q into 6q plus 1 into 6q plus 2 is an integer part which is divisible by 6. Now let's consider the numbers starting from 6q plus 1 multiplied to 6q plus 2 into 6q plus 3. If you look at the second number, we can take out two common from here and we can consider three common from the third one. So we get 6q plus 1 into 2 into 6q, 3q plus 1 into 3 taken common, we have 2q plus 1. So 2 into 3 is 6, written outside, can be written as 6 into 6q plus 1, 3q plus 1 into 2q plus 1. Or let us say, the numbers are starting from 6 cube plus 2. So we have 6 cube plus 2 multiplied to 6 cube plus 3, the consecutive integer, multiplied to 6 cube plus 4. And similarly now, we can consider 2 common from here. And we can consider 3 common from this. We get 2 into 3 cube plus 1 and 3 into 2 cube plus 1 multiplied to 6 cube plus 4. We don't have to take 2 common here, here because we have already got 6 common. So 6 into 3 q plus 1 into 2 q plus 1 into 6 q plus 4 which also says that it is divisible by 6. Now let's start the value from 6 q plus 3. So 6 q plus 3 multiplied to the consecutive integer that is 6 q plus 4 and 6 q plus 5. The same is the case, we take 3 common from here and 2 common from here. We get 6 times of 2 q plus 1 into 3 q plus 2 into 6 q plus 5 which also says that this value is divisible by 6. Now let's start from 6 q plus 4 multiplied to 6 q plus 5 into 6 q plus 6. In this, it's more easy. We can take 6 common from the last value. We get 6 into 6 q plus 4 into 6 q plus 5 into q plus 1. Let's consider the numbers starting from 6 q plus 5 multiplied to 6 q plus 6 into 6 q plus 7. 6 taking common from here. We have 6 into 6 q plus 5 into q plus 1 into 6 q plus 7 which says this product of these values is also divisible by 6. So the number either starts let's say from 6 q numbers of the form 6 q or numbers of the form 6 q plus 1 or anything of this. So from there we consider the next two consecutive integers we multiply them and in each case we see that 6 comes as a common factor to all this. Hence the product of three consecutive positive integers is always divisible by 6.